The Anthropocene Review, Lascaux Cave Paintings, with some visuals borrowed from Kurt's Gazette. A Review of a Review, by Logan Tenor, period 4. In John Green's 2021 book, The Anthropocene Reviewed, he seeks to describe a plethora of curious aspects of humanity and rate them all on a scale from 1 to 5 stars. The fifth topic is the Lascaux Cave Paintings, a menagerie of ancient art along the walls of a cave in southwestern France. In this chapter, Green discusses the present's relationship to the past, how they are uncannily similar, and how 20th and 21st century humans react to artifacts from prehistory. He accomplishes this by alluding to the present as comparison to the past, describing the history of the cave to increase his credibility, and heavily metaphorizing the art on the walls. Modern Art Before bringing up the actual topic of the chapter, Green instead shares an anecdote about his own life. He recounts that his children's first attempts at figurative art were hand stencils, which are pieces of art made by placing one's hand on a surface, like paper or a cave wall, and marking the area around it to leave a negative image. Green brings up this story to show the similarities between the art that children make in the modern day and the art that prehistoric humans made thousands of years ago. Green's anecdote references the present day in order to accentuate his main topic, the past. This type of reverse illusion is unconventional but effective. On top of comparing the past and present art, Green also compares his reaction to them as an audience, and segues from the topic of his kids to that of ancient humans. From page 35, paragraph 2, These pictures remind me that my kids are not just growing up, but also growing away from me, running toward their own lives. But of course, that's meaning I am applying to their hand stencils, and that complicated relationship between art and its viewers is never more fraught than when we are looking deeply into the past. History and Prehistory Green goes on to describe the discovery of the Lascaux cave art by a French mechanic named Marcel Ravidat and his dog robot, and the later closing of the cave after it was discovered that the amount of visitors was causing the art to deteriorate. He is careful and comprehensive when detailing these events, making sure to mention what happened to the group of kids who found the cave, and even add a footnote about a possible error. From page 36, Ravidat told the version of the story with the dog, but his earliest version of the story did not feature the dog as a central character. Even when history is a few decades old, it can be difficult to piece together. Nothing lies like memory. These pages, with their historical and informative tone, are an example of ethos, and serve to lend credibility to Green as an author. A handprint, but not a hand. The theme of the chapter as a whole is not solely the specific cave in France that holds the ancient art, but rather the relationship between the past and the present. Green begins to develop this idea on page 39. I'm no Jungian, but it's fascinating and a little strange that so many Paleolithic humans, who couldn't possibly have had any contact with each other, created the same paintings the same way. Paintings that we are still making. Near the end of the chapter, he's more direct, comparing the original cave to its modern imitations, which were created to preserve the original. He uses the handprint itself as a metaphor, a false copy of something that is no longer reachable. From page 40, paragraph 3, The cave paintings at Lascaux exist. You cannot visit. You, cannot visit. you, you can, can go, go to, to the, the fake, fake cave we've, we've built, built and, see and see nearly identical hand stencils, but you will know. This is not the thing itself, but a shadow of it. This is a handprint, but not a hand. This is a memory that you cannot return to. All of which makes the cave very much like the past it represents. The comparison of the caves to the art inside them serves to connect the two ideas in the chapter and create a sense of completeness, wrapping up the whole topic in a nice literary bow. Conclusion In this chapter, Green compares art from the past to that of the present, reinforces his own credibility, and draws a metaphor between the Lascaux caves and the art inside them. He uses a lot of different metaphors and analogies, and is not abundantly clear with his overall point, but he still manages to adequately describe the existence, finding, and relevance of the Lascaux art through his chapter on it. I give John Green's chapter on the Lascaux cave paintings four stars.